All right. Uh, uh, I know we're running just a little bit late on this meeting, but uh, this is the City of International Falls Truth and Taxation Public Hearing and Input Meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome everyone for being here tonight. Um, I will say on behalf of uh, Joe Kraus, our uh, Budget and Finance Chair, that this was probably one of the most difficult budgets uh, we've went through, at least in the six years I've been at the city, I can tell you this has been one of the toughest ones that we've went through. Uh, with that being said, there's been some compromise on, on all parts uh, from all of the members of our city council to get through to where we're at. Um, early on in this process, we, we made some very tough, tough decisions on cuts for appropriations, and we also had went relatively high on a levy increase um, while making those cuts. When we originally started this budget, this not when we started the budget, but when we got to the point where we had to come up with a levy increase for uh, 2021, we had set a 6% levy increase. We had cut appropriations and cut our budget. We also had pulled $126,000 out of reserves and we still were showing that we were going to be approximately $130,000 short of being able to put this budget into place. Uh, primarily due to, um, partly because of the airport funding, partly because of our ambitious uh, roads works projects that we've been doing, um, but those were the situations that got us to where we're at on this budget. In the last two weeks, there's been a lot of discussion in our community uh, regarding the appropriations, uh, Bacchus, the Chamber, and the Museum. There's also been a lot of discussions on the 6% uh, levy increase, uh, $126,000 coming out of our budget, but all of this was hinging upon um, how we could utilize CARES Act funding for our airport for the operations and maintenance of our airport. Last Thursday, uh, myself, um, our finance officer, and the city administrator met with uh, with the um, Kyra Brig or Kyra Hasbargen from um, the airport and Jenny Herman from the county. We went through the budget and we did find that uh, we will be able to cash flow through the um, CARES Act funding enough to be able to get through in 2021, which frees up a large amount of money into our 2020 budget, or 2021 budget. Once we were able to do that, we were able to put uh, a couple more things in line. As uh, some of you guys recall that um, our police chief this year was looking at adding uh, body cams for our officers in 2021. We ran a pilot program and that pilot program, uh, for whatever reason, found that it was not going to be able to work for our community at this time. So we are not going to uh, do that, or we're not going to do the um, body cams into 2021. That freed up $10,000. With that being said, through a conversation that I had with, uh, with um, Councillor Kraus, we took that $10,000 and we added $6,000 to the Bacchus budget and we added $6,000 to the um, museum budget. That got us down to a 0% levy increase, raised those funds, but we still were uh, withdrawing uh, from reserves approximately $100,000. Then last Thursday night, we had a budget and finance meeting. And uh, in that, we had some wonderful, wonderful conversation amongst this board. Uh, it We did, uh, at the end of the night, decide upon a 1.7% levy increase substantially down from the 6% levy increase that uh, we had initi initially proposed. However, we um, did return Bacchus and um, the museum to their 2020 funding levels. Respectively, 
fifty-five thousand for Bacchus and thirty thousand for the uh, museum. With that being said, we did leave a substantial cut to the Chamber of Commerce. That is uh, where we're at right now for our budget. Um, and with that being said, uh, I would like to hand this off to our city administrator for more information on uh, the budget and the levy collect collecting. Thank you, Mayor and Councilors. Um, that was a very good overview in much more simple terms than I could ever put it in for our budget. But um, I do want to walk through some of the information that we've provided uh, for council review as well as for public review. Um, one of the points that I want to make um, is that, um, as you can tell from the mayor's conversation, um, the council and staff really labor over trying to put together a good budget, but a budget that meets our needs, but is as lean as it can be to try and meet the service needs that we need to provide for our community. And so we did that this year as we do in many other years. Um, regarding the process that we went through, um, cities need to adopt a preliminary budget and a levy in September and then provide that levy to the county auditor, which needs to certify that um, proposed levy and budget. Um, that number that we provide to the county auditor in September is the, is the number that's used by the county auditor when they distribute property tax statements to the public in the month of November, last month, which you all should have received if you own property in the city of International Falls. Um, as the mayor indicated, uh, the council at that time, because of some many uncertainties, had proposed a levy increase of 6%. So what was sent out to all the property tax owners by the county auditor in your property tax statements received in November includes a 6% levy increase for the city of International Falls. However, as you heard the mayor just say, the council, again, laboring over our particular budget and the proposed expenditures and priorities that the council has identified for the 2021 budget has reduced that levy increase from 6% down to 1.7%. So the amount that you will actually see on your property tax statements, assuming that this budget moves forward as proposed, will be less than what you saw on your property tax statement that was mailed to you last month. Um, the point of this meeting tonight um, is to try and receive public input based on our proposed budget and levy. Um, the City Council is intending to adopt the final levy and budget at its regular meeting on December 21st. So that leaves us the next two weeks, the Council chooses to make any changes in this proposed budget, that that can be done and allow staff enough time to get the proper documents prepared to do that and adopt it on December 21st. Again, state law requires that we submit our preliminary budget or final budget and levy to the county auditor before the end of December so that that levy can be spread on all the properties in the city of International Falls um, next year. Um, again, these meetings are required to be held by state um, statute and they cannot be held before 6 o'clock p.m. and that's why we're scheduling this tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. and it's very consistent with what we've done in the last several years. Um, getting into some of the general issues with the budget or primary highlights with the budget, the City of International Falls budget uh, has, uh, the bulk of our revenues come from three primary sources. One is local government aid, and that local government aid is referred to as LGA commonly. You'll see that in the media as well as in meetings that the City Council holds as well as other councils. It's provided by the State of Minnesota and it's based on a formula of need that's established um, and involves age of the housing stock, population, poverty standards, there's a whole number of factors that are included in that formula. The City of International Falls is a significant benefactor and receives a great deal of local government aid and I'll get into some specifics later on in my presentation. The other primary revenue source is property tax levies. And then the third primary source is utility fees and for us that's uh, the bulk of those utility fees come in the form of water services and sanitary sewer charges. 
So moving forward then, whatever is adopted by this city council will be what's spread on the property taxes in 2021. Um, one of the changes that we're going to be seeing in 2021, and I just want to make a peripheral comment about this, is that Councilor Briggs has been good enough. He had served on the City Council for a number of years in the past. Uh, he was appointed to fill a vacancy in the at-large position. Uh, starting in January of 2021, Mike Holden was elected by the public, and he will be taking, in, taking office as the at-large City Councilor starting at the organizational meeting in January. And um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Brian for all his work in helping to prepare this budget, as well as working as our liaison on the labor negotiations that we're currently in the process of doing with three of our collective bargaining units. Ken, I honestly thought you were going to say we were saving money because he brought his own plaque. <laughs> <laughs> brought it back twice now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Never say never. Yeah, we might see again the way things have happened in the past, but... Um, so anyways, moving forward again, uh, as I indicated, the final budget and levy has to be certified by a resolution adopted in the council sometime before the end of December, and we're hoping that to be December 21st. Now, in the informational materials that you have, or that we've included in that resolution, we put in Exhibit A. And Exhibit A is a one-page snapshot of all the funds, or most of the funds that the city has, and has some history on our appropriations, what we've generated uh, in property tax levies in past years, as well as the local government aid proceeds we've received. Um, as I mentioned, it also lists the appropriations and some other categories, which in this case includes the airport city share that we have to fund, as well as the uh, International Falls Recreation Commission that we have a joint powers agreement with the International Falls School District. So Exhibit A is the primary go-to reference for the way our budget is going to look um, by fund. Um, I just want to highlight, I think I won't go in great depth about the 2021 budget highlights and the changes that we made since September because the mayor did that. But in the informational materials, um, I've distributed today a memo that's about 11 pages, and it's titled... Um, 2021 or the highlights and summary of the 2021 proposed budget um, so that was prepared today and it's based on the information that we mailed out last Friday that includes a number of uh, graphs and pie charts that show the major areas where our, our revenues and expenditures occur and I will go through those in a few minutes um, basically um, one of the things I want to point out is that the 2021 budget um, includes a significant share of our funds going to fund public improvements. And as everyone will recall, in 2018, the public approved in a referendum the use of sales and use tax um, of 1% to generate monies to help pay for our public infrastructure improvements. So the city in uh, June of last year, 2020, I'm sorry, this year, 2020, issued about... Um, $3 million, I'm sorry, $5,550,000 in bonds that are supported by sales tax monies. So for 2021, $3,015,672 of those bond proceeds, as well as a few other revenue sources, will go towards paying for the public improvement costs that you saw in 2020. Those will be continued in 2021. We're projecting doing roughly 80 to 90 city blocks with improvements including uh, primarily bituminous milling and overlay or blacktopping and some curb and gutter improvements as well as other improvements throughout the community. Um, I wanted to point out that um, as a pleasant surprise, when we had looked at the historical average on sales and use taxes, we were assuming we were going to get somewhere between eight hundred and eight hundred and four thousand dollars a year in sales tax revenues generated by that sales tax that first went into effect in October first of twenty nineteen. To date, through November in twenty twenty, we've generated over eight hundred and forty two thousand dollars, so we're ahead of our annual projections. And what that means is we'll have some additional monies that we can spend on local improvements over the course of uh, 2021 and if that trend continues future years as well so with the 1.7 percent levy increase um, in 2020 
one, um, our proposed tax levy for 2021 will be $2,980,864. That 2021 levy increase of 1.7% will provide $49,828 in additional monies over and above what we generated in 2020. And you know, 1.7% levy doesn't sound like much, but it doesn't generate much either. It's only it's less than fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, when you talk, start talking about a five or six percent levy increase, it really doesn't generate a lot of new money. And I, it's just a comment that I want to make sure that the public is aware of. I talked about another, the primary revenue source that the city receives is local government aid. Uh, in 2021 the local government aid increased 1.94% over what we received in 2020. That generated $83,263 in new money. So for 2021, our total local government aid is $4,382,111. And again, that compares to our property tax levy that we spread on all the taxpayers in International Falls of $2,980,000. So we generate significantly more money in local government aid, which is state aid, than we do and what we charge to our uh, property tax owners in International Falls. Um, I have identified in my memo the ambulance service fund, or the ambulance fund, and um, we're experiencing continued deficits even though we increased the cost per call uh, $500 in January of 2019. So with that uh, cumulative deficit, which is over $1,177,000, um, the City Council is authorized moving forward um, with one of two approaches. One is to move forward and establish an ambulance service taxing district. That taxing district will allow us to spread taxes over the entire ambulance primary service area, which is 989 square miles. And again, the, the area of the City of International Falls proper is only about 6.4 square miles. So whatever money we have in the form of a deficit in our ambulance can be spread over that taxing district to make up the difference for what we don't receive in insurance reimbursements. The other approach is, is we can just enter into a contract to offset those costs, and that contract would be with the other governmental um, organizations within the primary service area, and that would include Kuchitin County, City of Rainier, um, City of Loman, and, and Birchdale. Uh, off the top of my head, I guess Ray would also be included. So, uh, But we would have to negotiate con costs for that. So we'll move forward to bridge this funding gap that we've been experiencing for the last several years. The Permanent Improvement Fund is another fund, and again, this is a fund that we use to pay for public improvement costs. Uh, in 2021, we're showing about $1,402,000 uh, in the PI fund that will be expended in 2021. About $602,000 of that amount is from property tax levies. The remaining amount, $800,000, is transferred from other funds, primarily the water and the sewer fund, the fund water and sanitary sewer. Uh, main improvements. I would comment that one positive trend for at least 2020 is that right now the sewer fund expenditures are much lower than what our budgeted expenditures were. Um, we're right now uh, generating only about $26,000 in a positive cash flow in the sewer fund. We're generating about $94,000 in surplus to the water fund. Um, the sewer fund, however, because we've had a relatively dry year, we're not seeing a lot of inflow and infiltration into the sanitary sewer system. And because of that, we're not getting charged um, as much as we have in past years from the North Cooch Sewer District to pay for treating that clean water. So that is one good outcome so far for the year. And so right now the water and sewer fund have positive cash flow balances, but uh, we are encouraging the city council to move forward with some um, modest increases on an annual basis to keep both of those funds solvent as we move forward because they're both considered enterprise funds and need to be self-sufficient. The final comment I would make about the airport fund is just that we have created 
in addition to Fund 612, which has shown all of our operations and capital expenditures in past years, we've created two new funds, Fund 613, which was created to identify the annual capital expenditures that the airport commission makes. Um, so each year they include a modest amount to do capital improvements to the uh, runway or buildings out at the airport. We've created a new fund to make that more transparent. And then we've also created Fund 614, which is also a separate fund to reflect capital projects, but it's primarily for major multi-year projects and that would be, as an example, the terminal building reconstruction project that's nearing closeout now, and then the uh, runway reconstruction project that's in the third of a four-year project uh, time frame. So um, we've created those, and you'll see those. Those are new for the 2021 budget. The mayor talked about the reduction in the airport budget as a result of being able to use CARES Act monies from the FAA and the federal government. And so for the 2021 airport budget, we're reflecting expenditures of about $177,962. And those are primarily for capital costs because the operations expenses will be paid for by the CARES Act money. Um, a few other comments, um, just under our other miscellaneous categories, the sales and use tax bonds are the only bonds that the city has for bonded indebtedness. And again, those are supported by the sales tax funds and we have ample revenues to pay the bonded indebtedness for that. Um, I mentioned that we are in the process of negotiating three union contracts. The current contracts are scheduled to expire on December 31st of this year and uh, we are in the process of negotiating all three of those contracts and depending on how those contract negotiations end up there may be some impacts to the budget um, and we'll have to see how those shake out and again Councilor Briggs is our uh, negotiating liaison in addition to myself and our legal counsel um, We've identified appropriations to other agencies for 2021. That total right now is $129,474. And that's about, um, I don't know, $41,000 less than it was um, in 2020. The 2021 budget reflects $80,000 being used from existing cash reserves. And there's about $14,000 that are available from the 1.7% increase. I think the council talked about potentially using that when we negotiate um, new services with the Chamber of Commerce contract. It could be used to reduce our reserves right now. Um, our reduction in reserves is at about $87,000. If the council applies all that money to the Chamber contract or some other purpose, then our reduction reserves would be a total of $102,071. That is our deficit spending and what we have to take out of reserves to fund what we've got projected for 2021. So uh, finally, I think really good news is, is um, although one questions whether there's any good news as a result of the pandemic, but the federal government did appropriate CARES Act monies that went to the state of Minnesota. Governor Walls appropriated those monies and distributed those monies to local governments. Um, Kuchichin County got over 1.6 million. The city of International Falls received $462,439 in those federal CARES Act monies. That was used to offset some expenses that were unbudgeted, but we incurred as a result of the pandemic. We spent a lot of it on, on um, protective equipment, on, on other improvements to our uh, facilities to try and make them more secure and more protective from uh, distributing the, or, or from protecting people from getting the COVID-19 um, virus. And uh, those monies will show up as additional expenditures in our 2020 budget that were unbudgeted, but um, again, it's offsetting some additional monies that we had, uh, did not have to spend in 2021. So I know that the council as a committee had, had some questions about well, how much money did we save in training and travel expenses because we couldn't go anywhere as a result of the pandemic for the bulk of 2020. Uh, I had the finance officer calculate those numbers based on actual expenditures in 2020 through November versus what we had budgeted. And we actually saw that we have about $75,252.69 through the month of November uh, that have not been expended out of those things. So 
that tells me that that amount plus some additional funds will probably carry over into our fund reserve from 2020, but we really won't know what that actual amount is until we get our audit in June because there's a lot of journal entries and, and um, <coughs> movement of monies that the auditors do with our finance officers. So, uh, but that's encouraging, and I know that was a number that the council wanted to see. So, again, that's probably more than I wanted to explain, but I, I just briefly want to go through the graphics that we included in our packet. Um, again, the most important one that shows in a snapshot is Exhibit A to the resolution that shows the history of our levies in LGA as well as our fund, proposed funding expenditures um, in the various funds. Um, the graphics include um, some pie charts, and so the first one that we have, and Emma will bring up for our uh, viewers on blue jeans uh, watching remotely, but what we've included in here is just some charts and graphs that can provide a summary of where our expenditures and our revenues have been um, in 2020 and compare that to 2021 budgeted expenditures. So the first graph that you'll see is 2020 budgeted revenues in a pie chart. And um, that's in the major categories of local government aid, ambulance fees, sewer fees, water fees, uh, property tax levies, etc. Those are shown in this pie chart. You can compare that with the proposed 2021 budgeted revenues in a pie chart on the next page. The primary difference in the two pie charts is that the um, sales and use tax revenues are shown in 2021, and we have about 804,000 or 5% of our total revenues that are coming from the sales and use tax that was not shown in 2020. Next page shows the 2020 budgeted expenditures um, for our general government, which is our a general fund 101 we had five million eight hundred eleven thousand dollars in change in in 2020 that was 41 percent of our total budget for 2021 we have um, five million eight hundred sixty six thousand but that's 33 percent of the total budget because of the monies that we're using in our sales tax revenue bonds to fund public improvement projects so you can see how those major categories are reflected in that pie chart listed as 2021 budgeted expenditures. The next graphic is a table that shows the history of our property tax levies. And again, for 2021, it's $2,980,864, a 1.7% increase. Last year, we had a 5% increase in our property tax levy. The two years previous to 2020, we had 9% increases. And again, that goes to fund our need to meet the um, deferred maintenance on our infrastructure as well as other costs. Local government aid is shown in the lower half of that page. Um, you can see the amount, again, for 2021 was $4,382,111, and that's a 1.94% increase. We have a combined table that's shown in landscape form on the next page. That shows the history from 2002 through 2021 of both local government aid and property tax levies. I like to have this particular graphic in all of our truth and taxation meetings because it reflects in past years how much the state pulled back from their certified LGAs to the city. And in the years 2003, 2008, 9, and 10, the city received $1,000,000. $105,150 less than what we were supposed to receive, and all those cutbacks were in December for the same year's budget. So that's part of the reason why the city needs to maintain significant reserves to fund what we have to pay for the first six months of next year, as well as due to the uncertainty in the local government aid reimbursements if the state has a budget crisis. And as everyone knows, the rainy day fund has been depleted significantly because of the coronavirus pandemic. So. Um, that's why the council had a great deal of difficulty trying to manage our budget and still reduce our property tax levies. Um, the next two pages, which are the final two pages to the handout, um, the next one shows the local government aid, and that shows that aid from 2006 to 2021 in a bar chart. 
You can see that that has gradually been increasing. There was a significant increase in 2009, but it's been relatively slow and increasing gradually from 2009 through 2021. Again, local government aid, a significant factor in balancing and funding all of our operations and capital improvements. And the final one shows the combined local government aid and property tax levy and shows what those trends are from the years 2010 through 2021 as proposed. So Mayor, I appreciate everybody's patience in letting me go through that information. The state does have some requirements in making sure that we disclose the proposed levy increase and budget, and uh, that provides some rationale for what the council did and why. Um, I'm available to answer any questions of the council, and then, uh, of course, uh, the council should open it up for public comments and questions. All right. Does anyone have any questions from the council uh, for Ken regarding the budget or anything that has been discussed? Please. You know With that seventy-four thousand surplus in like, the the uh, departments that didn't get spent, is that something that we can add into it now and, and not go with the one point seven percent? Well, councilor, the the short answer to that is is that um, I think there's a great deal of uncertainty which I tried to talk about a little bit with the the, the combined stuff but um, we, we haven't you know that what's unfair about that number and that's true there is that and, and I think that would carry over in that one light item to be a represent a surplus for next year in 2021 however I don't know of all the other line items and there's you know sometimes pages of line items for each budget some of those you know, the budget is only a guideline that we have to essentially adopt in September for the full next year's expenditures. So sometimes we're over on particular line items, sometimes we're under. And um, I'm hesitant to try and just throw that money at reducing the levy with not knowing what our final budget surplus or deficit will be for year end. And we'll have a better idea of what that will be unaudited at the end of January after all of our December expenditures are reflected. But right now, I would really hesitate to, I can't tell you with certainty what, what I, I really don't know what, they, what the numbers is gonna be. Yeah. Any other questions for Ken? So I, I guess I had a follow up to kind of what, uh, what Walt was uh, just discussing. He was talking about the, the funds that uh, didn't get expelled from trainings because of COVID. My question would be very, very similar, but the North Cooch sanitary funds that we have that are in excess, uh, once we get those th that we have not uh, expelled because it's been a dry year, which we all understand that. So is that something that we would be able to, once, uh, once 2020 gets, uh, gets accounted, our accountant firm comes in and looks at it and we're audited, if that fund uh, comes up that we have that in excess, is that something that we could put into our P&I to try to fix the sewers since that's the reason that that bill gets so high every year? Mm -hmm. So those are funds that we could look at, at shifting next year so that maybe we can fix some of the sewers so that when we have high rainfalls, we don't have to incur such high costs. Uh, absolutely, and you know, I think the best way to look at it um, for both the water fund and the sewer fund, which used to be combined prior to 2019, is you know one of them could be in a surplus, the other one could be in a deficit. So we separated them so we could see how are they cash flowing separately. Um, they both have to be self-sufficient standalone funds. And right now, I would say that they're basically break even or a little bit to the plus, but you know, $26,000 in a $1.9 million budget is really break even. Right. And, yep. and we did experience lower expenditures this year because of the fact that you're talking about. Yep. Um, I want to, so, so we can do that if there's sufficient, and that would be a discretionary decision that the city council could make. We need to have a positive fund balance in both of those, and, and I, I think one of the important things to keep in mind, and, and in the example I would provide is in the, on the water side. So we know that every year we need to um, paint and or recondition our elevated water storage tanks. We have three of them. We have a ground storage tank at the water treatment plant, and we have two towers, one in South Falls and one in the old South Falls and one in International Falls. And, in, on, um, and, and 
We have not been saving money to do that, and they're both over 22 years old. We know that next year we're going to do the tank um, off of Industrial Boulevard, and the estimated costs for that are $810,000. The cost to do the sandblasting and repainting and reconditioning of the other one in South Falls, which we hope to do in 2022, is $550,000. So what we're trying to do in our long-term proposed capital improvement plan is set aside monies now, collect interest on that as the fund balance increases, so we have cash to pay for that without having to scratch your head and figure out how we're going to pay for that. We've been fortunate this year because we can use the sales tax proceeds to help pay for those costs, and that's what we issued the bonds for to do. Otherwise, um, we wouldn't have had the money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And we need to do the same things. We've got some of our water distribution system and our sanitary sewer collection system that's approaching 100 years. And so that's what we're looking at through our televising and our lining process is to see what has to be dug up and replaced and what can we just line to try and get another 20 or 30 years out of it. And so I just really need to encourage and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have a long-term view on some of this stuff because part of the reason why we've had levy increases in the seven years that I've been here is because I think we're trying to fix some deferred maintenance that's been accruing over the past few decades. Isn't municipal government wonderful? Yes, it is. All right, so any other uh, questions for Ken? All right, now that we've bored everyone in the audience and everyone's tired from listening to us, we'll open it up for public uh, comment. I do want to make one, uh, one piece well known at this point. This is to discuss the, how your taxes are being spent, not how your taxes have been raised due to um, valuation on your homes. Uh, every time we do this uh, meeting, and I, I don't think that's going to happen this evening, but every time we've done this meeting, we have uh, people come and talk about the valuations of their homes. That isn't what this meeting is. Uh, that is something you need to uh, discuss with the county um, assessor uh, considerably before this meeting. But this one is to discuss how we are spending your taxes. So uh, with that being said, I would open it up for public comment. Please come to the microphone and uh, and state your name and your address and uh, any comments or concerns that you have. Please. Can we take these down? Yes, minute? definitely. Julie Maelstrom. <laughs> just because I'm short. Uh, just a few things I want to say. As you know, your people voted you in, except for Brian. Uh, you work for your people, but when you raise their taxes, you don't work for their people. I've said it many times. You know, if you have no money for the friggin' airport, forget it. You didn't ask us people if we wanted to have it. So why do you want to use our money to remodel it? Anybody answer me that? I can't. I, okay, please. I, I would have jumped at it. Um, please go into the mic so they can hear you online, too. Because without this, the airport, you probably wouldn't have a paper mill here right now. Now, now let me finish. Oh, I will. I, I was in a meeting when the CEO of PCA stated to us in the audience that if we didn't have this airport, he would shut that mill down. That's number one. Now, Talk to any businessman, and you can leverage a million or two million dollars countywide for a thirty-nine million dollar project. He'd tell you it'd be foolish to turn it down. You're getting thirty-nine million dollars worth of improvements at that airport, which is going to keep that airport viable for at least another twenty, thirty years. It's going to keep this community going. And it, and it makes good business sense. Any businessman would say, you give me $39 million for $2 million. He'd say, why not? And that's not the, you know, and you, you're saying that that's the reason the taxes are going up. That's not the reason taxes are going up. It was that's to be, Brian. Maybe a little bit of it. Brian, yes. it was because you had no money to do your share to put in the airport. 
is what I'm getting at. But the majority of this community does not use that airport. And why do you have to listen to the building on the corner? Did you raise their taxes like you're raising our taxes? Are you putting their taxes up? Their taxes will go up the same as, as mine that's, or anybody else's. That's what I want. That's what I want to know. Yeah. That's what. But I'm just saying we have one airplane that comes in in the winter. You know. I mean, take a look at our community. Look at. Wait a, wait a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute, Brian. Wait a minute. You're saying one airplane. Explain. One airplane a day. You, then you don't know what goes on our. I do. Sir, My I neighbor work worked there. there. I do. I, I do. Work out there. There's more than one airplane. You have in two the flights winter. a day in commercial. We have two flights a day. Right now, we're two flights a day, except for Tuesday and Saturday. Okay? We signed an EAS agreement. The EAS agreement is the FAA gives us a million dollars a year to operate that airport. Gives it to us. Okay? We don't have to pay for it. They give us to maintain that airport. Okay? And maintain that flight service coming in here. Okay? What you don't know is the amount of airplanes that come in here, you know, this is a bad year because of COVID, but anywhere from April to October, I'll bet you there's at least 10 to 20 different aircraft that come in here. The, the Belgian Air Force comes in here and refuels on their way to Mount Home, Idaho because of the, this being an international airport. There are all kinds of flights that come in here. It's a busy airport, believe me. And even right now, you have FedEx, okay. uh, UPS come in every day for your overnight express. There's planes coming and going. And I, I would like to piggyback but, on one thing that he said just because we kind of got farther in the conversation. You asked what, what value we have out of that airport. The, the key thing is, is, yes, it was expensive to build that new terminal. The old terminal was not sufficient to be, it wasn't practical for having TSA and it was not in compliance from the, the changes that have happened from uh, uh, September 11th, 2001. So we had to make upgrades. It was actually cheaper for us to tear down the terminal and build a new terminal for that, uh, or for that 95 percent of government aid money that we got from the federal government, with us only having to put in two and a half percent, than it would have been if we would have made the required changes of that building to meet, make it meet the requirements to be able to have flights in here. Okay. What I'm saying is, you should ask the people. Don't take our money because you don't have money. Well, you got it now, but you didn't have money to put in the pot. But don't put it on us people. You know, what? You know, take a look. It's a beautiful airport. Take a look at this community. Take. Have you really looked at our community, at the homes and whatever? We're going under, man. Do you think these people have money with you raising taxes all the time? You know, they don't. They don't have the money. We'll pack our bags and we'll go live at the airport. They don't have the money. You know, I'm not the only one. I don't have any money either. But I'm just saying, you keep raising them, you know, what do they get? Nothing. You know, wasn't that 1% supposed to be for the roads and whatever? It is. It is. Okay. But are you taking extra money from your pot to put in for it? Yes. Yeah. Extra yes. money. Yes. We're still, that was part of the part that of this budget that made it so difficult. We still were, we were asked to set aside $750,000 of this year's money that we have to put into next year's budget to continue doing our roads in addition to the money that we have on that 1%. We're that far behind. We couldn't put in the $750,000 for our own road streets and, and sewers. We only could get in 375 this year. Well, what, what happened to the money that we didn't have it to put in for the airport? Where'd it go? Where, where did that pot go? that you wanted to raise the taxes to fill in for it. Where did that pot go? I don't understand okay. the question. Where did, you didn't have enough money, so you were going to raise the taxes to 6% because you didn't have enough money to give your portion to the airport. What happened to that money? Where did that money go? The state bonding bill passed. Pardon me? The state bonding bill passed. 
which no. lowered our which lowered our construction costs, and they were able to use CARES Act money to cover their to cover the the Over shares to cover the pot. Over a million dollars. Over a million dollars for two years. So, Julie, we're raising taxes 1.7 percent. But my you, taxes yeah. on my house are going up two bucks. No, I'm just it's the principle of it because it was going to be up six percent. But, it, but it's not. No, I understand that. I understand that. We cut that by two-thirds. Yes, which is good. But I'm just saying, if you would have left it at 6%, which is a lot of money for this community, mm -hmm. what do we have? Look at our town. Look at our town. If we don't have the money, quit giving to uh, you know the REC or the, the Baptist or whatever. They should be on their own now. What is important is our police officers should have their cameras. They really should. But quit giving to everybody else if you have no money. The, the, cam, the body cams from the police department were recommended from the chief not to do. He said not to do. We didn't cut anything. Okay, I, I didn't hear right. He said, he said that he doesn't seem it. like it can be feasible to do. He said, I would rather not do it at this point. Now, okay, I thought program. he wanted it, and yeah. I didn't hear right. We had a yeah. pilot program to try it out, and he came okay. back and said no, he didn't want to do it. But I'm no, just saying, you know... I mean, it's a lovely airport, but why? Look at this community. Julie, you keep bringing up, excuse me, you keep bringing up the airport. There's more to the increases than just the airport. I mean, when you sat next to me, you should, you should, should have known when you were on the council before. Your costs go up every year. Well, I know. So, so you're going to have to levy, levy every year. Period. Um, in, I know, in a normal but then, year, you're then you got to cut where you don't have increase it. To keep up with wage increases and everything else, the cost of running the city goes up. Um, Do our wages and, go up? And, huh? Do our wages go up? Years did. No. Years did. Huh? You, you got to raise. Years did. You guys got to raise. Who did? Council. You did. No, I didn't. I never got a raise. Well, you get for meetings now. No, not me. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's leaving. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you like that raise when we were on there and had uh, 10 committees and 20 committees to be on? It's only a raise yeah. if we take it, and I can right. promise you I'm not going to take it. I understand. But I'm just saying, it's the principle of it. If we have no money, well... Julie, one of the reasons we're in this spot right now, too, is because the infrastructure in this town has not been taken care of for 40, 50 years. Oh, I know By previous that. councils. By previous stop. councils that right. did I know, not I, know, I know that. Let's you need to do them. things every year. The road should have been done every single year. Yeah, every single year, but they got left go. On. In order to catch up on it, things got to increase. Yeah. Well, I wasn't the only one on the council, so. No, I apologize, I'm Julie. <laughs> I'm just, I fought, let me tell you, I fight hard for my town. You know, I'm not picking on you. I fight hard for it. Or anybody. Yeah. But anyway, but I'm just, that's my concern. I don't want an increase either. So. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I don't want an increase in it either. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. Especially this year. You know. But I mean, the people in this community don't have it. I agree. And you know what? We need to get the, the uh, uh, county needs to start kicking their share in. Why do we... All of us have to pay for all of their stuff. That is wrong. Their truth and taxation meeting is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And you want me to go marching over there? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Oh, well, you know how far you get with those people. No, I'm just saying. I appreciate you know, that. our ambulance service is in trouble big time. But why are we paying for them when we got to take care of our own? That's all I'm saying, you know. And that's and, what they're looking at right now. It's being looked at, Julie. A lot of the oh, yeah. concerns that you have are not falling on deaf ears. Those are things that we're definitely trying to work on, especially as you bring up, and, and I think that that's one of the concerns, at least on, on my part, I can't speak for the rest of the council, but when we, when we talk about the ambulance service, uh, specifically, we used to get $10,000 for the county just for having an ambulance service. Then they just quit that. I know. And I'm not, I'm I know. not calling out the, the, the county on that. I'm just stating a fact of what happened. As our costs continue to go up on running an ambulance, the, the, um, the fees, it doesn't matter if we charge a million dollars a run. 
I know. It won't even matter because I know. We lose money every run from the Medicare Medicaid. Well, the insurances, yeah. So that's but it would we, help a little bit if they threw in some money. And that's why we need to come up with a taxing district or a, that's what we a need to do. contract with yeah. the county and that's what we're working on right now. And that's and what the we, same need, concept, we need to do. The same concept falls when we we talk about the airport commission or the airport. If we had a taxing district, even though the city and the county are, are uh, partners in the in the airport right now. If you're a city resident, lo long and short of it, you're still in the county. So you're paying your 50% share for the airport, but you're also paying 10% or 12% uh -huh. as a as a county member as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so the, those are the concerns that that I have. Any way that we have a joint powers agreement yeah. is the residents of International Falls are always paying more. And Every why? And, and we and, shouldn't. And we I shouldn't. understand that. And and we've we've made we've made progress. We're having tough conversations, and I just want you to walk out of here knowing that tonight, it, we, your your concerns are not falling on deaf ears. These are things that we're looking at that we're trying to uh, we're trying to move forward with. And you know, I will fight for my town. You I know understand. That. I love my town. I'll fight hard. Brian knows when we gotcha. work. I fight hard. But if the county doesn't want to do it, then they need to just buy their own ambulance, get their own building, and do their own thing. And do their own thing, and see how much fun it is. And we'll take care of our own people. Right. No, it's not fair. The library is another one we're looking at, too. Yeah, and, and there's probably city more old, county people go to the library yeah. than they do city people. Talked about a taxing district there also. Yeah. So we've, we've looked into all this, Julie. We're, yeah. we're no, and I'm not saying you're not, but I'm right. just, you know, I get a little frustrated, but it, because they don't do their share, it's It wrong. doesn't show. Pardon? Your frustration does not show. <laughs> I <don't> well, know. <laughs> well, I do. I love my town, and that's you know. just, I have to say what I have to say. I appreciate I that, Joe. I always have a good discussion with you when I see you in Menards. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, when I go in and first. I get out, I run fast and get what I got to get, and I get out. Not yeah. When I see you, I hide. No, I <laughs> get my contacts. <laughs> no, no. All right. No. <laughs> But All right. Anyway, well, thank you, Julie. Just, uh, my concern. I thank appreciate you, Julie. that, Julie. Thank, thank, you, thank you for thank listening, you. Brian. You betcha. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to bring forward to uh, the council? Going once, going twice. All right. If there's no other uh, public comment, uh, we will close the public hearing. Um, and I don't see. Uh, a march of people that are looking for uh, to be heard so we will not continue to a later date I will uh, um, move to close second I have a motion to close I have a second any discussion uh, before we go just know that this uh, this mo or this budget will be up on our next regular city council meeting and that's going to be december 21st uh 2020 to the best of my knowledge and i want to be very fair to uh everybody because i know there's uh people in the room that are very concerned about this budget for funding i don't believe we're going to be having any budget and finance meetings between now and that meeting so any changes that may or may not happen would end up happening on the night of it um so i just want to I would just like to say that uh, I'll state it now that I will not vote in favor of this current budget with a 1.7 increase. I'm holding the line to a 0% increase because of, because of COVID this year. I don't think it's fair. There's a lot of people hurting. It's not fair that we fund back us to the full amount that we, that, that's in this budget right now and the, the museum. It's not, not fair. When I had a previous discussion with Harley, we were moving it up to, to 31, 31 the same as what the county is kicking in. I mean, everybody's hurting. Everybody's got to take a, a, a cut in this. And I will not vote in favor of this budget with in, the increase back to the 55,000 for Bacchus and the 30,000 for the museum. I don't think it's fair that we're going to with the 1.7 increase, we're going to increase it to all the people in town that are hurting. Everybody's got to take a, a, a cut in this. And I think it's only fair that we go back to the, what we had before. You know, uh, Mayor brought up about the 31,000 going up to, for Bacchus. 
increasing it to that, I'd be okay with that. So, but, but I will not vote in favor of this budget the way it stands right now. It's not fair that a lot of people, a lot of businesses in town are hurting. Everybody's got a share in it. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. I'm sorry. I don't. I, I know people from Bacchus are here, but you have to understand. There's a lot of people hurting in, in town, you know, and we've got to share the wealth. So far as you know, everybody's going to have to take a cut in it. And I'm going back. To, we don't have to go back to the to what we had uh, at the uh, previous budget meeting. But uh, you know, I'm okay with going up to the thirty-one thousand for Bacchus, and I think we come up with another amount. Another four thousand, or whatever, yeah. and another amount for the museum. But you know, it's not fair that everybody else is being cut except for Bacchus in the museum. It's not fair, and and I won't vote in favor of that unless we do something different to them. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we are adjourned.